It's Tuesday, September 3rd, 2024. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I want to get right into it. Uh, we had a disastrous day in markets today. Uh, NVIDIA plunges almost 10% dragging basket of chip stocks to worst day since March of 2020. NVIDIA saw $300 billion in market cap vaporized just like that. Uh, Dow Jones was down 626 points today. NASDAQ down 577 markets across the board hammered. Um, it's amazing to think that uh, you have just a handful of companies that are literally carrying the entire stock market at this point, NVIDIA being one of them. What's going to happen when these tech companies really begin to slow down? What is going to happen to the rest of the market? Uh, here's more bad news today that definitely affected the market. Weak manufacturing measures raise specter of U.S. economic slowdown. The ISM monthly uh, survey of purchasing managers showed that just 47.2% reported expansion in August. Uh, we saw an expansion of just 46 uh, 0.8 in July. U.S. factories remain in slowdown mode. You know, I just thought to myself, how much do we even manufacture in America these days? How many factories do we really have left in America? How many millions of, of jobs have we lost in the last 20 or 30 years in manufacturing? Do we really manufacture much? Um, a lot less than we used to. But again, uh, a 47.2 percent uh, of um, uh, purchasing managers reported expansion uh, for August, 46.8% in July. Not good numbers. Uh, here's another one today. This coming uh, uh, from uh, the uh, hedge. Uh, persistent economic pressures, changing consumer habits, send more restaurants into bankruptcy. Uh, you see the narrative here. Things continue to get worse. I don't talk about much good news regarding the economy because there really isn't much good news. If you have some good news that there's some part of the economy really booming, please comment down below. Give us the good news. We could use some. Uh, I'm looking at articles from The Hedge, CNBC, CNN, uh, Market Watch, uh, you name it. And there's not a whole lot of good news out there. Uh, it's been a rocky year for the restaurant industry. Now, I know that there'll be three people that write in and tell me that they went out over the holiday weekend and the restaurants were packed. They probably were. Uh, but overall, we have lost thousands. If you go back to, uh, to the health crisis to now, we have lost tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of restaurants across this country. The industry is in deep trouble. Uh, I continue to see restaurants closing. Uh, our IHOP in La Quinta is shut down permanently, gone. We've lost a lot of mom and poppers. Uh, we're, we're, we're losing even some of the uh, big chain uh, restaurants out here in California. Higher prices and the consumer's balance sheet is completely overburdened. They are tapped out. They are maxed out. Uh, it is now literally, for a lot of people, a luxury, a luxury to go to a fast food restaurant. Um, a lot of people who would go to you know, a medium price restaurant, they're, not, they're just not going out to eat anymore. And it is now a luxury just to go to a fast food joint. And people aren't doing this every day like they used to. Uh, but when you have prices, food prices, where they're at, labor costs, where they're at, and you have the consumer... Uh, just completely maxed out at this point. Uh, their balance sheet overburdened. They don't have the money. Uh, they just cannot go out to eat daily like they used to. Uh, this is, um, in my opinion, probably one of, if not the most difficult businesses to get into at this point. I think you, you have to be out of your mind to open up a restaurant in this environment right now. But what are you seeing in your areas? Are you seeing restaurants opening? Are you seeing them closing? Are you seeing them busy? Are they not busy? Uh, I would say out here that it is noticeably much less busy than it was a year, two, three years ago, for sure. I, I, I don't go out to eat as much as I used to, and thanks to many of you, I've cut out a lot of the lunches. Lunch was my worst one. Uh, now, you know, 80, 90% of the time, I'm making my lunch at home. I don't even go out for a coffee anymore. Uh, I make my coffees at home. It saved me a lot of money. It saved me time. And I will say this, the quality of food 
that I can make at my house versus the quality of food at a restaurant night and day. I, I was reading some of the comments last night and a lot of people were commenting on the quality of food. A lot of people are commenting on the quality of food and I've been talking about this for a while and many of you have also, but I'm going to bring it up again. Have you noticed the quality of food at the restaurants, whether it's fast food or even your mediocre restaurants, maybe even some of your high-end restaurants, that the quality of food isn't what it used to be? The quality of food is definitely not what it used to be. I, I would say there are some restaurants out there that are still keeping the quality the same, but wow, the prices have gone up so much. In order to keep that quality, uh, so many restaurants had to raise prices so much. Um, and many restaurants just couldn't raise anymore, so they had to cut something. They're cutting quantity, they're cutting quality. Um, and so I have noticed it, at least over the past year, the quality of food is just night and day. Even some of the food, a lot of the food even that you get at the grocery store, I've said this many times, a box of cereal today, you have a bowl of cereal. It is not the same bowl of cereal that you had five or 10 years ago. It is absolutely not the same. I don't know what they're putting in this stuff. Maybe it's the bugs. I have no idea. But the quality of just a cereal today is not what it was five or 10 years ago. Uh, if you get a, 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 you know, a, a cookie uh, product or a cake from the grocery store out of a box, um, it's not the same. You know, you know, getting a chocolate chip cookie, uh, one of those box cookies from one of the major brands, not the same as it was five or 10 years ago. The ingredients have changed. The portions are much smaller uh, and the prices continue to go up. Here's another one today. Home buyers down payment hits record high, surging nearly 15% in a year. This is absolutely astonishing. Anybody that believes that we're not going to see a massive real estate collapse, you are drinking the Kool-Aid. This is 100% unsustainable with what we're seeing. The amount of money that people are paying monthly in these in, in their mortgage payments, uh, the down payments, the job losses, uh, the, the high prices of homes, uh, people's uh, wages not keeping up. I mean, if you're having to pay 40, 50% of your income to a mortgage payment, how long do you think this is sustainable? The median down payment for buying a home in the US has jumped to an all-time high due to home prices and mortgage rates. The typical down payment for US home buyers hit a record $67,500 in June. That is up 14.8% from a year earlier. Who in the world can do this? There are fewer and fewer people that have enough money to put 10 or 20% down on, on a home. Th that is becoming uh, almost extinct at this point. Uh, and, and how long can people hang on when they're paying 40, 50% of their income to a mortgage payment? One little uh, accident, one little emergency, these people are in big trouble. One, like one, one week of not working, big trouble. Spouse loses a job, big trouble. Uh, this is unsustainable. And at some point, this whole house of cards is coming down. I have no doubt about it. That's my opinion. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that the housing market is going to continue uh, to go up when home sales are collapsing? Home sales are collapsing. Uh, we're going to sell somewhere around 4.5 million homes this year, 2024. That's around the same that were sold back in 2008 during the Great financial crisis. This is a crisis, ladies and gentlemen. Sales are slowing. They're stagnant. There are less people that can buy these homes. Uh, the industry is in very, very big trouble as more new homes are coming on the market. Uh, most MLSs now uh, in your area, you're seeing more and more inventory. That inventory is staying on the market longer. M more uh, sellers have got to cut prices in order to sell. This is not 2022, ladies and gentlemen. Those days are long gone. But now, with these massive job losses, with inflation uh, being much stickier than they first thought, uh, you're going to see more trouble in housing. Here's another one. Nearly 40% of Michelin workforce opts to voluntary severance amid downsizing plants. Uh, this is Emporia, Kansas at the plant there. And less than a year ago, Michelin announced the, the, the close of uh, their Ardmore, Oklahoma plant, which is set to close uh, sometime in 2025. So here, more people uh, are losing jobs. And, you know, tomorrow we'll hear more people losing jobs. And I believe, if I'm not, uh, I, I believe 
if I'm not correct, please uh, correct me, but I believe we're going to get the job numbers this Friday. I, I have no idea. The, 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 I don't believe any of the data anymore. Uh, they told us uh, yesterday that 9% more people were traveling over this Labor Day than the past Labor Day. Is that true? Possibly. Uh, but we do know that half the people, uh, according to a lot of the um, articles I was reading on um, CNBC, Fox Business, and many, many more, that 40 to 50 percent of people uh, could not afford to take a vacation this summer, but that didn't matter because they were just going to put it on their credit card. So you could say, oh yeah, everybody's traveling. Oh yeah, the restaurants are busy. How are they paying for it? Look at these numbers, ladies and gentlemen. Look at these layoffs. Look at these uh, home sales that are collapsing. Uh, look at the auto lots that are filled with cars. Look at the RV lots filled with RVs. Uh, we just uh, talked last week about that. Uh, the largest RV dealer in America having to cut prices 55% uh, on some of their RVs. Uh, so this is a complete mess. Here's another one from the hedge today. Hungry is first central bank to pause rate cuts as inflation suddenly jumps. It says here cutting rates is easy. The problem is what happens when you cut rates a few times and suddenly inflation is roaring back with a vengeance. Could we see that here in the United States? We're all assuming that we're going to get a cut this month. That is the, the forecast. I would agree that's probably going to happen. But what happens when we cut a couple more times and inflation comes roaring right back? Hungary cut rates 15 consecutive times. Uh, last week, they left the, the, their benchmark rate at 6.75% due to inflation breaking 4%. So again, what will happen here? We're not even close to 2% and we're going to cut rates. And what's really fascinating is we have markets literally at all-time highs. We have unemployment and this is, you know, I'm just going on the data, unemployment below 5%, GDP 3 uh, I think they're forecasting 3%. Uh everything sounds rosy. Uh and yet they're going to cut rates. What does the Fed know that they're not telling the average American? What does the Fed, why are they cutting rates when markets are nearly, nearly at all-time highs, when unemployment is below 5%, when we keep, keep hearing how great the economy is doing, how great this is, how everything is wonderful? Why are they cutting rates if everything is so wonderful? And what will these rate cuts actually do? I think these rate cuts are going to produce more inflation. I think these rate cuts are going to hurt the middle class. They're going to hurt the poor. They'll be great for the top 1%. But at some point, everybody is going to feel the pain. Even the people at the very top are going to get hurt here because this whole thing is going to come down at some point. Here's another one. Toyota recalls 43,000 hybrid SUVs because their tow hitch covers could fall off. Uh, it is daily now with these recalls. And we're not talking a couple hundred cars or a couple thousand cars. Here's another 43,000 recalls. I just did one the other day with Ford, 50,000 recalls. Uh, more problems with quality of everything in this country, uh, of vehicles, the quality of food. I mean, the food, I mean, we can go back to the, the whole Boar's Head uh, incident. Uh, that uh, They may be done. They may, Boar's Head may be done, but you, you know, many people have died. A lot of people got sick. Um, and who knows how many other people got sick that we don't know about. But how could this even happen? Who, who is watching this? I, I thought we had people uh, at the FDA that uh, w w keep an eye on this stuff. How could a company like Boar's Head uh, that sells higher end deli meat? Uh, have have such an issue like they did where disease bugs running around it just unbelievable what is going on that that i don't know what was it 30 40 people dead hundreds if not thousands sick we don't even know uh how how could this even happen but heaven forbid you're blowing bubbles at, at a park in san diego you know you, you'll be fined uh heaven forbid uh you know you park your car and you didn't pay the meter for three minutes you're going to be fined uh you, you know it's unbelievable what will happen to boar's head now they should be out of business they really really should they should be done out of business and why was this not brought to uh the attention uh of the professionals before all this took place 
I thought that there were standards. I, I, I thought that there were people that, that you know, uh, went into these uh, factories and, and, and checked these places out and reported and made reports, right? I mean, they come out here to the restaurants all the time and, and, and report on the restaurants, close them down if they see bugs or rodents or anything like that. How in the world could this have gone on for this long without somebody reporting it? Unbelievable. Somebody needs to be held accountable here. Many people probably need to be held accountable here because a lot of people were not doing their job. And because of that, people lost their lives. People got uh, very, very ill. Um, horrible. Horrible. Uh, here's another one. CNN, America's a massive hotel strike just got even bigger. I think it has died down a little bit today, but uh, from Boston to Hawaii, we saw as many as 10,250 uh, hotel workers at 25 hotels on strike. Uh, workers want more money because they cannot even afford to live in the areas of these hotels to take care of these hotel guests. So, we're watching more and more people um, just with food insecurity, uh, with uh, financial insecurity, having to go on strike, having to go to food banks, having to uh, borrow money from family members. Uh, people just aren't making enough money because prices have gone absolutely out of control. And a lot of that is because of inflation. You can thank the Fed for that. You can thank all the government spending for that. You can thank all the wars for that. You can thank, thank all the bailouts for that, all the money printing, all of the artificial injections into the stock market to juice the markets. You can thank all that because now people can't even afford to live in these areas to work. In fact, a lot of people can't even afford to go to work now. It costs too much uh, to insure their cars, to put gas in their cars, uh, to even go to work. Uh, it's not even worth it. There's nothing left over after they pay their taxes uh, and pay their rent. There's nothing left. There's absolutely nothing left. Something's got to be done here. Uh, if inflation is not uh, put under control here very, very soon, more and more people are going to be in very, very big trouble. If they do not get inflation under control soon, I mean, people are falling by the wayside every day because of it. I mean, how much longer can people hang on in these conditions? The food prices, the gas prices, the insurance prices, the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, prices of, of utilities, uh, of, to go to a Walmart and, and just buy something, to buy a pair of shoes. How much longer can people afford to do this before they no longer can do it? People have cut literally everything out. Here's another one, cable TV. This is uh, from MSN. Uh, cable TV's collapse deepens. It's becoming increasingly clear that there is no longer any floor. Uh, Cable lost 1.6 million uh, subscribers in the second quarter of 2024, and it's saying that number could go much, much higher. What's to stop it? People are cutting things out, and pretty soon, for a lot of people already, they've cut everything out. There's nothing left to cut out, and they still cannot make it. But I will tell you, uh, here we have the minimal amount of cable, and I think uh, we're going to get rid of it. Uh, we just have the very, very basic, and it's not even worth it. I, I think it's just a total waste, and I think I'm with these 1.6 million. I think it's time to to cut even the basic cable out. Uh, but people are cutting everything out, many because they have to. Uh, it, this is now forcing people now to have to make some very very serious decisions. Before people had all this discretionary uh, uh, spending. Or, or ability to spend, and now they're forced to make decisions. They're 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 forced to say, "Hey, I'm gonna just buy this much at the grocery store because I gotta pay the electricity bill. I gotta pay the water bill." So you know, we're cutting out all the all the junk, uh, the junk food, the cable. Uh, we're gonna be cutting out you know Friday nights at the bar. We're gonna be cutting out you know the weekend uh, trips to to Las Vegas. Whatever people are cutting out a lot of things in order now just to survive. People have now realized they are in survival mode. Uh, here's one from the uh, Hell Turner radio show. Remember the 2008 gr uh, Great Financial Crisis? That was then. This is now. Uh, it talked in the article about all these billionaires building bunkers. A lot of you know a lot of billionaires building these bunkers. Uh, Zuckerberg building that multi-million uh, dollar uh, bunker in Hawaii. Why are they doing it? 
Uh, and it said here, it's not to, they're not worried about World War III. They're worried about the angry masses, the angry masses right here in America. Because when the angry masses finally wake up and realize that they've been robbed, bamboozled, ripped off, their pensions are gone, their social security is gone, inflation is through the roof, they're starving, uh, they're living on the streets, they're living, you know, 15 people to a house. Uh, they're going to be so angry. So, uh, you know, they're probably going to be angry enough to lash out at the wealthy. And there are going to be a lot of wealthy people uh, at the very, very top, extremely scared. And they're going to be living underground while people above ground are starving, fighting one another. Uh, it'll be a Mad Max type of, of world. Um, these people will be living safe and sound underground. But uh, why are they doing it? Why are the central banks buying up one ounce of, uh, out of every 10 ounces being mined of gold across the globe? Why are billionaires building bunkers underground? What are they going to hide from? They're going to hide from the masses, the angry masses who have been robbed and wiped out. Uh, they may want vengeance. I don't know. What do you think? Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this. Um, but there's a lot of things happening. You, you can't really listen to what they're telling you. you got to follow what they're doing. Don't listen to what a central bank says. Follow what they're doing. Follow the money. They're buying tons of gold. If you need some gold, if you need physical gold or silver, go to my link down below, SD Bullion, um, or buy from whoever you want to buy from, or don't buy at all. It's up to you. But I'm doing what the central banks are doing. Uh, I'm certainly not building a bunker underground, although we're going to try to, to uh, visit one of these bunker companies in October and talk to them. Uh, I'll talk more about that on another show. But business is booming. There's a lot of wealthy people right here in America building bunkers underground because they're getting very, very concerned, not about, you know, uh, a nuclear bomb going off in America, which could happen, no doubt about it. They're more concerned about the Mad Max society that we're going to see that has already begun, the violence, the chaos, the anger, the masses, the hunger, all that. And people uh, are looking for a place to escape to, to where they can be safe. Now, if that's a bunker, I don't know. I don't know how safe you're really going to be there. But um, I guess if you have enough food and water and you can hide out underground long enough, it would be a miserable life, it would seem to be, uh, to me. It'd be very miserable to be that long, staying that long underground, months. But I guess if people really are fearing for their life, they're gonna they're gonna do what they gotta do, and you got a lot of people buying bomb bunkers now to to get ready to hide from the Mad Max society, to hide from the chaos and uh, the angry uh, masses out there. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to interview somebody on that. Should be interesting. Uh, other than that, comment down below on anything what you're seeing in your areas regarding. Um, the holiday weekend, the restaurants, the travel. Did you travel? Was it really busy? Um, how are people paying for all this? Uh, let us know. Comment down below. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. God bless every one of you. Stay safe out there. And as always, I look forward to speaking to each and every one of you. Take care.